there's one thing that I think all of us need to work on, which is letting go of fear. It's extremely helpful when it comes to creating authentic content is to have no fear. Of course, letting go of fear is also a bigger life lesson for all of us. But let's apply that to your content and to your business. Something that I've noticed in so many people who try to create content and business and everything is just they're, they're so afraid of losing people. Oh, what if I say this and it, people don't like it? What if people even get offended? But usually you're not trying to offend anybody, obviously. But the irony is that if you were trying to offend some people that you genuinely didn't like, you ironically would probably attract more of your true fans. Now, that's not the way I like to go about it. I mean, that's how some politicians do it. They purposely offend uh, in order to, to draw forth more of their base uh, of, of followers. That's not my preference. My preference is more, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I am I, am, I, I, I keep on showing up and practicing what it means to be more powerfully me. And being more powerfully me might look to totally different from what it means to be more powerfully you. So as a contrasting example, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, some of you know who he is. He's becoming a very popular uh, content creator and he swears a lot in his videos. He says the F bomb, <laughs> you know, oftentimes and, and, and other swear words. And he's been doing that for a long time. And when I first encountered Gary V, I was really turned off by him. I really didn't like him. I said, who is this guy? He was so, so um, brash and so forward. And, and it seems like he's, you know, he's, he's just rough. Right. And then I just kept hearing about him from different people. And then I gave him another try and another try and another try. And eventually I really got to understood. I, 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 I got to sense into his heart and he, I think he has a heart of gold. Uh, and once I got to sense into his heart, I'm like, okay, now I get him. Now I see everything in a different light. And now I'm a big fan of Gary V. Um, so that's one example. I mean, an another example, you know, Seth Godin is a very different kind of example. He's a marketing, he's considered to be a marketing guru to a lot of us. And he blogs every single day. I mean, he has a new blog post every day. And being a blogger, you're supposed to always put an image to your blog. I mean, come on, the common sense. You're supposed to add an image to every single blog post. If you're, if you're, not, if you're, don't, if you're not adding images, you're losing people. You're not, you know, getting the opportunities of a blog post. Guess what? Seth Godin never puts any images into his blogs. It's just words. So he's bucking the trend and he's extremely popular. He's extremely well regarded. Now, I'm sure he loses a lot of people, but the people who love him are raving fans and he has plenty of raving fans. Another example, and I was going to apologize, but especially in this video, I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to bring in uh, Andrew Yang. He is my favorite politician right now. And Andrew Yang has like over 100 policies on his website. Now, you go to his website, you look at his 100 policies, you might really, really resonate with like two or three of them, let's say. I mean, just, just as you look down, you might go, oh, this one is really good. Oh, yes, I really agree with that one. But then he has another 97 policies that some of which are probably going to really offend you, really turn people off. So for, for example... He, um, Andrew Yang has been att attracting a lot of uh, former Trump voters. He attracts a lot of former Trump voters, people from the right wing. And people from the right wing really, a lot of them really love Andrew Yang. Uh, Andrew Yang, even though he's a Democratic candidate. And they love the fact that he's talking about how automation are taking away, taking away jobs. There's no more jobs. And he wants to give everybody $1,000 a month as a freedom dividend. And he makes a really good case for that. Anyway. But recently, he reiterated his uh, belief that Planned Parenthood is important because he, he's pro-choice. He wants women to be able to have abortions if they want to in a safe and, and affordable way. And of course, some of his right-wing followers said, no, that's it. I, I can't, right? But he says, no, that's, that's who I am. That's, and then 
other, of course, more liberal uh, people go, oh, great. Yeah, now I'm, so it's no fear is what you and I both need to practice in our content for a couple of reasons. One is that it's really the bigger calling of life. So, so I mean, so much of marketing is fear, fear driven, not just trying to make your audience fearful so that they'll buy something, but it's the marketer herself or himself who was so afraid of not making a good impression or of turning people off, of not coming across as persuasive, of not coming across as pretty or handsome or attractive or whatever, that they just, they, 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 they just perpetuate fear in the world because there's an energy signature of fear from marketers. And then so consumers who are learning marketers think, uh, learning marketing think, oh, I sense the fear in them. So that must mean that that's the right way of doing marketing. I should also be afraid. And so I should also use ticks and tips and tricks and, and tactics to make people afraid, right? Because then I'll be able to have enough business. There's a core underlying fear that I'm not gonna have enough. And so I better, I better do things that are popular. I better do things that manipulate people into doing what I, what I want them to do to buy. But the thing is, the, pro, the, 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 the tricky part of all this is sometimes, oftentimes fear does work in the short term. You, you use fear, you come across with fear to be popular, to, 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 to use tactics that are, that are attractive and, and interesting and whatever. And then people do pay attention to you. Oh, or you, 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 you instill fear into your audience. And of course they pay attention because the human brain has evolved to pay up more attention to negativity, to fear than to love and to positivity. So we pay attention to, we, we, we are more likely to give energy to, oh, what might I lose? Oh, what might I uh, lose out on? Uh, what might happen to me? Uh, the thing, the bad things that could happen to me. We're, we, we give more attention to that than we give attention to what could, good things could happen to me if I do this or do that. And so fear just keeps spreading because it seems to work in the short term. It does work in the short term. But in the long term, it destroys your emotional balance. It also creates a world that you don't want to live in because everybody is fearful and everybody is using fear to get other people to do what they want them to do. So let's stop. Let's, let's, let's just take a moment and realize what's happening and make a commitment to say, I will practice no fear going forward in my content. I'm not gonna be afraid of losing anybody. If I send an email newsletter, I will know, I will expect that if it's an authentic newsletter, some people better unsubscribe. Yeah. If I make an authentic video, some of you better unfollow me. Some of you better hide all posts or whatever. Some of you better unfollow me if I make an authentic piece of content, right? And of course, if an authentic piece of content, some will unfollow me, some will unsubscribe, and yet others will be even more excited because they're like, thy totally resonant, because that's the definition of a true fan. You have true fans as well. Many, most of your true fans have yet to meet you. Most of your true fans don't even know about you, but they won't, get a, they won't have a chance to know about you if you don't show up as you really are, as your powerful self, okay? And when you do show up as your powerful self, your true fans who already have discovered you will be even more excited, even more loyal to you, not because you're trying to make them loyal, but because you are showing your fearlessness in a way that they wish they could also be fearless, right? You, you, you are also saying something or, 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 or explaining something or telling a story that they really, really resonate with. And if you, do, if you, come, if you come at it with no fear, it's much more resonant. It's much more powerful. Stop being afraid to lose people. Don't worry about unsubscribes. Don't worry about unfollows. Don't worry about, oh, what if I don't please that segment? Who the F cares? I'm not gonna say any cuss words here because I don't want it to come out with it as, an, as an explicit video. There's no need for that. That's not, usually, I don't usually cuss in my videos. That's not really my real self anyway. So I'll let Gary be, uh, uh, be, be that niche. But, but it, the, the thing is, 
Okay, and, and, and you might say, well, how do I show up as my authentic self? It is a journey of exploration. It is not something where you go, one day you're suddenly your authentic self and that's the way you are forever. It is an unfolding evolution of who you are and who you are in 10 years that's authentic may be different from who you are today. And I might be really different in 10 years than I am today, but I'm continually experimenting and exploring and trying different things to see, is that me? Oh, does that, does that feel right to me? Does that feel true to me? Right. And as I learn more, as I experience more of life, I will evolve and find that, oh, what I thought was me, what I thought was true, what I thought was the best isn't really what I want. I, I want this instead. And so I will experiment and become more of who I am. Okay. And who I am is always evolving and who you are is always. So it's a journey, but, but don't be afraid to publicly show your journey of evolution. And that's really how you do it. You don't wait until you become authentic and then finally show up. You go to 10 years of therapy, figure out what your authentic self and then show up. No, the, the, the very point of authenticity is the journey itself. If you think you can go to therapy for 10 years, become authentic and then show up, the irony is you're trying to find some kind of perfect version of authenticity. And authenticity is the opposite of perfect. It's the opposite of perfect. Authentic means that you, you so respect the evolution itself. You so respect the journey that you're going, to, you're going to publicly show your journey. That's what it is. So you'll publicly journal in writing. You'll publicly ex think out loud like I do. I think out loud on my videos. All right. I frequently, I mean, if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I frequently go, oh, but, oh yeah, I wanted to say this other thing. Oh, but you know, and then I sometimes lose my train of thought and sometimes my camera goes out of focus for a second, but sometimes I lose my train of thought and you're like, George, you never completed that first thought because I'm thinking out loud and yes, it's unpolished. Yes. I lose people, but this is actually much more fun for me. I really enjoy being able to publicly bring you along in my way, in my, in my process of thinking, in my, in my evolution. You get to see my evolution over the years. And, and guess what? Your true fans also really appreciate seeing your evolution because your evolution is the evolution they themselves are going through. That's the definition of your true fans. Part of the definition is that they are growing in the ways that you are also growing. Now, you may be a step or two or three ahead of them, and that's why they admire you, and that's why they follow your content. But they want to see what's what's more interesting in a in a in a in a movie or in a theater production. Somebody shows up, they're perfect, and they you you see a perfect life, and then the end of the movie, you're like, that was boring, right? What you rather see is somebody show up as they are and become much better, or at least transformed over time. That is a much more interest. That's what everybody wants to watch. So why are you trying to show up perfectly? It's boring. Ironically, it's ironically more interesting for you to publicly document your journey to say, okay, this is, I'm working this through right now. I'm trying to dis describe my experiences right now, right? I'm working this through. And, and as I've, as I've said in other places, there, there's, there are three stages of content. Uh, I, and you might Google three stages of content, George Cow, and you can read that. So, but I'm talking about the stage one, which is most of your content is going to be stage one. And I, I just really encourage you to commit to a practice of letting fear go. Don't worry about losing people. Don't worry about offending people. Be more concerned of you losing your soul. That's what you should worry about. You should worry about, oh God, now I'm, I'm trying to please my mother again. Now I'm trying to please my, my third grade teacher. Oh God, now I'm trying to please my, my client, okay? You don't have to please anybody. Don't create content for anybody's approval. Create content because it is a journey of exploration that is important for your soul. And it happens to be that as you explore, your true fans really enjoy your explorations. Now, you also need to, of course, learn how to distribute your content. My favorite way of distributing is through Facebook ads, as I've said many, many times. Uh, my second way of, favorite way of distributing is through joint ventures. 
I'm going to be teaching a class on that in a couple of weeks. So I'm excited about that. So distribute through Facebook ads and distribute through joint ventures. If you don't know how to do those things, I think it's behooves of you. If you care about your business growth, you should learn about those things, whether for me or for somebody else. And then as you, as you distribute your content, well, you should keep coming back to no fear showing up with your powerful self. Don't worry about losing people. People are going to hate on you. Some people will, but for every one person who hates on you, there's going to be three more true fans that are either silently or publicly saying, you go girl, you go guy. Okay. So be fearless in your content. Forget losing the people. See here, here's the thing about losing people. Many of them, some of them actually do come back to you years later because they'll keep hearing about you. Just like I said about Gary Vaynerchuk, I used to, I used to hate him. I used to like, oh, I, I really hate his strategies. I really hate the way he is, the way he shows up. I, I can't stand him. And then I kept hearing about him and I kept giving him another try and another try because people say, oh, you got to check him. I got to check him out. Okay, 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 I'll check him out. And then eventually I'm like, this guy's, this guy's brilliant. And this guy's a heart of gold. This guy is amazing, right? Same thing with Seth Godin. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, he writes too much. I don't know. But then I keep hearing about him here. Oh, wow. This guy is really, really amazing. Heart of gold, et cetera, et cetera. You have a heart of gold too. So don't worry about losing people. Some of them will eventually come back as they keep hearing about you. But the ones who don't come back, they're not meant for you. And here's one more thing I forgot to say. This, I think it's really important. Is why are we so greedy about, oh, I have to please everybody. You think, think about it this way. Trying to please everyone is actually really greedy because you just want everybody's attention. And I realized, you know, I don't need everybody's attention. I think attention is so precious that I want people to go and watch what they really, really resonate with. If they don't resonate with me, please don't watch me. Watch somebody else that you really resonate with because your attention is precious. If my blog posts don't resonate with you, don't read my blog post. Read somebody else's that really resonate with because your attention is precious. Don't be so greedy. Just you, you only need your 100 true fans in your entire lifetime. You only need 100 true fans to have a thriving six-figure business. So you're just tr really trying to find the 100. You're not, you, who cares about the other millions who don't like you? You're just trying to find the 100. That's it. So don't be so greedy. Now, the opposite of that is, or not the opposite, the earlier stage of that is maybe you're not greedy, you're afraid. You're afraid you won't have enough clients. You're afraid you won't have enough fans. What you need to learn is, is not just authentic content. You need to learn to distribute your content. You can't just show up and expect that, oh my God, some, suddenly you'll go viral. You have to learn to use ads to get your authentic content out there. I do that all the time, right? I pay, I spend, I've been spending about $1,000 a month on Facebook ads for the last year, year and a half. Now you don't have to spend a thousand. I tell people, listen, start with $30 a month on Facebook ads. You all, you already do a lot more than most small business owners, $30 a month. If you can spend a hundred or $200 a month, that would be even better. It's, it's advertising money for your business. Did you expect to build a business without spending money? I mean, that's not realistic unless you're willing to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one outreach and get a lot of rejections and be okay with that which is also a good practice because it's practicing not caring about approving approval and, and letting go of fear and sourcing your self-worth from within yourself. And that's a good practice too. But if you don't want to practice getting tons of rejections and reaching out to people and having tons of people say no to you, if you'd rather not do that, then Facebook ads is the way to go. That and, and JVs, joint ventures, which is what I'll, what I'll teach coming up. So anyway, don't be greedy or don't be afraid. You just need the hundred people, which may take you uh, six months to six years to find those hundred, but depending on how good you are distributing your content, how, how much you're willing to spend on it or how many JVs you're willing to do. But if you distribute your content well, then you'll find your hundred true fans sooner rather than later, and you'll have a thriving business. So I want that for you. Don't get anybody. Don't worry about people's approval. Be more, more powerfully yourself. So I hope this helps. I'm gonna take a look to see if uh, there are any questions or comments um, from the live video. So bear with me, do, do please put your uh, information or put your comments or questions below. And thank you, uh, Danielle, great to, great to see you here. And Ida, thank you so much for your comments. And um, those are the only comments I'm seeing. Maybe there are others, I'll, I'll check it out after this. So, all right, I wish you a wonderful day going forward and practice fearlessness. It is a practice and it's something that 
is our lifetime, <laughs> lifetime journey. All right. Okay. I wish you well. Take care.